everybody. Tonight we're going to talk about circular flow and GDP. Within the circular flow model, we're going to look at two. We're going to look at the simple model and we're going to look at the expanded model. In discussion of gross domestic product, we're going to talk about two of the three ways that we can measure GDP simply because I don't think the third is that important for our purposes. The first one here under number one, measuring GDP is the value of production of final goods and services. The second is measuring GDP as spending on domestically produced fin uh, final goods and services. And then item three we're going to discuss is GDP, just a summary in terms of what's in and what's out, because sometimes by looking at what's not in there, it can help, it, or what's not in there, it can help us get a better sense of what's in there. Let's move right on to the circular flow. So the circular flow is, is really a simplified representation of the, of the macro economy. It shows the flow of money this way, here you see in the green, and it shows the flow of goods and services, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as the factors of production here, here are the factors, through the economy. The underlying principle here is that the flow of money into each market or, or sector is equal to the flow of money coming out of that market or sector, and that's what defines this circular flow. So there are two groups of decision makers in the private economy, as we know, uh, households and businesses. So here we have households, and here we're calling it firms. Let's begin with the product markets. A product market is where goods and services, things like cars, computers, and corn are bought and sold. So households are on the demand side of this market because they purchase goods and services. Businesses are on the supply side of this market because they're offering the products for sale. Interaction of this demand <clears throat> excuse me, and supply determines the price of each product, which makes sense. And then flow of consumer expenditures constitutes sales and receipts for business. Now let's talk about the resource markets. A resource market is where resources, so labor, capital, land, are offered for hire and they're employed. Households supply resources directly through workers or indirectly through ownership of corporations. Businesses demand resources in order to produce goods and services. And then interaction of the supply and demand determines the price of each resource. So think of those productive resources, which in turn turns into income for the owner of that resource. Flow of payments from businesses for resources, uh, it constitutes business costs and then resource owners' incomes. The expanded circular flow model takes this basic piece here, which you can see right here, and what it does is it shows how money, it shows with much greater detail how money flows through the economy. I don't want you to spend a lot of time understanding every single step in this. But understand that between the simple and the expanded circular flow model, what we're doing is taking that basic flow and we're showing specifically how money flows through the economy. We're also adding here government spending, so both government borrowing and then government purchase of goods and services. And we're also looking at the financial markets. We're considering their borrowing and stock issues. We're looking at foreign borrowing and sales of stock. And very importantly here, you see rest of world. So it's how do we, how does our economy interact with the rest of the world in terms of imports, exports, foreign borrowing, and also foreign lending and purchases of stock which go into the financial markets <clears throat> and then circulate through the rest of the economy. Let's move on to the GDP or gross domestic product and, and how we measure that. We talked about two different ways which are shown on this graph, but first let's look at a, a very basic definition. Gross domestic product is really nothing more than the total market value of all final goods and services produced within a country in one year. This idea of final goods is very important. We're going to exclude something called intermediate goods. So for example, let's skip ahead to this chart. When we measure GDP and we talk about production of final goods and services, we talk about adding up, adding up the value of all goods and services produced in the economy and take away the value of intermediate goods and services. So let's look at an example here. We have <clears throat> the iron ore industry here. Then we have, we have two pieces of it. We have the ore industry, we have the steel industry, but then we have what they produce, cars in this case. We have American ore sells to the American Steel Company. American Steel Company then sells their steel, and here's the value, they sell that to American Motors. American Oregon, the value of their sales go into American Steel. The value of American Steel's product goes into 
what's sold by American Motors. Now the difference between these two, between this number and this number, is consist, it consists of value added. So value is added in taking the ore and turning it into steel. Value is added in turning steel into car, excuse me, <clears throat> turning that ore into steel, which is then turned into cars. When we talk about gross domestic product, what we're interested in is this right here. This 21500 is the final value, excuse me, the value of production of final goods and services. What we're not considering here is 21,005 plus 9 plus 4,200 because it would be duplicative. So let's take a look here just at a, at a quick example of <clears throat> two different ways that we can put together uh, a GDP and see here graphically that they actually add up to the same thing. So the first we talked about was measuring GDP as the value of production of final goods and services. Okay, Here we have value of production of final goods and services. So we have value added here by government, we have value added by households, and we have value added by business. Each sector adding its segment of value into the overall measure of GDP. So here we have value, here we have value, and here we have value. But remember, we had to subtract these amounts in order to get that GDP. When we use our first measure, what we're actually doing is considering the value added by each segment of the government excuse me, segment of the economy, but here where we talk about value added by business, we're looking at a sum, we're looking at a sum of that value added here, 21,500 equal to this, which is actually the value added by this sector. Here we have our second measure, and that is measuring GDP as spending on domestically produced final goods and services, and that's where we'll spend the balance of our time tonight. When we consider that second valuation method, we're talking about pretty straightforward measure. What happens is GDP is divided into the categories of buyers in the market. So in this case, household, consumers, businesses, government, and buyers from outside of the country, otherwise known as imports and exports. We have C is consumers. We have, we have here uh, investment. We have government spend expenditures, and we have net exports here. This is exports minus, uh, exports minus imports. So let's take a look at each of these. So first C, personal consumption expenditures. It includes durable goods, non-durable goods, and services. Examples are non-durable head of romaine lettuce, durable washing machine. Services, here we have pedicure. It could be consulting services. It could be therapeutic services. These together make up the C in the GDP measurement. Let's move on to the next one. Let's look now at domestic investment, that I. I sub G is used in this particular here, so it doesn't look like interest. If we look at domestic investment, what I'm going to do here to keep us to eight minutes is let you look at this and look at government purchases. So remember, C plus I plus G. I'm going to let you pause it here and just look through these examples because, frankly, I'm not going to add a lot of benefit to you by reading through the definition plus the examples. So go ahead and pause and then come back when you're done looking. A couple of things to remember on net exports. First of all, all spending on goods produced in the U.S. are included in GDP, whether the purchase is made here or abroad. So that's exports. Often goods purchased in the U.S. are produced elsewhere. That's imports. Therefore, net exports is the difference of those two. It's exports, so the things we've made and sent abroad, minus the things that we have purchased here in the U.S., but they were made someplace else. So... At the end of the day, that can be either a positive or a negative number, depending on which is the larger amount. And we can talk about trade deficits later, where we actually have imports greater than exports. But the thing to remember here is net exports is our, cons our, our spending on goods that are produced in the U.S. and consumed in the U.S. We have to take out those things that we consume in here but weren't produced here. So again, GDP equals C plus I plus G plus net exports, consumption, plus investment, plus government spending, plus uh, net exports. Importantly, now, what's not in GDP? Intermediate goods, we talked about those earlier. So intermediate goods, we're talking about things that go into the production of final goods and services. Also importantly, secondhand sales are not included in GDP. Things like used items. So you buy an Xbox 
and then you turn around and sell it and somebody buys it on eBay, that is not that is considered a secondhand sale or a used good. Those are not in GDP. And then purely financial tr transactions, the three that are most important are Social Security, welfare payments, and then stock and bond sales because that is the sale of an existing asset. Now, the commission that a broker makes on that would be considered as part of GDP. All right, so there you have it. Circular flow and GDP, we talked about the simple model, the expanded model. We also talked about two ways to measure GDP and then what's in and what's out. That's it. Have a great night.